Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and the Earth here looks extremely cluttered with all kinds of really funny looking points. Today, as you can probably tell from the video title, we're going to be talking about the satellites orbiting our planet, and we're going to briefly discuss the total number and the types of satellites out there. I'm going to also show you a website that can help you explore this a little bit more, and well, overall, you're going to learn more about the space exploration and how it really picked up in the last few years. Welcome to What the Math. So this photo right here was actually published by a European Space Agency a few years ago and honestly I'm getting a bit of a mixed feeling about it. On the one hand I'm really proud that we were able to achieve so much in terms of space exploration. On the other hand though, it really looks like something I want to just scratch off. It almost looks like our planet is like sick or something. But on the other hand, let's actually not talk about the negatives of having so much satellites in space just yet. I'm going to do this in the video tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn about the so-called Kessler syndrome. It does sound like a sickness, doesn't it? Today we're talking about the number of satellites and specifically I actually wanted to show you the website uh, known as Stuff in Space. The link for this is in the description below, where you can actually uh, look at and pretty much see most major space launches that involve some kind of a satellite or a debris. And um, we're actually are going to take a look at some of the things that um, we were able to launch in the last few years. But specifically, I just wanted to talk about, well, this. Look at this from the outside. You see this ring here? Can you guess what it is? Well, you can probably see that um, it almost looks like an artificial ring. And this is actually something that I've discussed in one of the previous videos you can see on top. Um, this particular ring can technically be used to find intelligent extraterrestrial life um, outside of our solar system. It does have a name, it's called a uh, Clark ring, or essentially the ring of satellites formed by um, some kind of intelligent species that almost looks like a ring around the planet, but it's actually artificial. And um, today we're going to briefly talk about, so what kind of stuff is here and how much of it is here? But first, try to guess, how many satellites do you think there are out there? And how many did we actually launch this year and last year, which actually was the record year for satellite launch. 2017 was actually the highest number of satellites we've ever launched. And so to answer the question of total number, um, there is almost 5,000 objects here. Very, very close to 5,000 after the recent SpaceX launch that introduced 64 more satellites. And um, we don't really have them on the list just yet because when I'm making this video, the launch just finished. Uh, however, I'm sure when you're looking at the website, they're already going to be there and you can actually find them, I believe under SpaceX right here. You can actually maybe find them this way. Um, you can also obviously use this particular website to see what's uh, orbiting right above you. So right now I'm in South Korea, so I can actually go here and maybe see if anything is flying over me right now. And right now there seems to be nothing, but you can actually see how every satellite here is actually moving around um, as it orbits the planet. So um, with all of the satellites we launched this year, we actually increased the total number of satellites by about 5%. And like I said, there's close to 5,000 satellites out there now. And um, I believe this year we launched close to about 300 satellites, but in 2017, there were a total of 453 launches. That's actually a lot when you think about it. Um, it's literally like more than, I guess, almost two satellites per day. And in some sense, you have to remember that many satellites were launched as a bundle. So like, for example, SpaceX just launched a total of 64 satellites um, in this particular launch you see on the screen right now. And uh, basically all of them were so-called uh, CubeSats. They were tiny satellites, um, only about 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters in size, um, which really makes it um, a relatively efficient way of launching different uh, communication, but also different research satellites. And so after this particular launch, uh, the number of total objects increased to uh, close to about 5,000. Although it may not sound like a lot yet, you have to also realize that over the last 50 or 60 years, we've only actually been able to launch about 8,200 satellites in total. So that's how efficient and how extremely, extremely productive we've become over the past few years. And I think a lot of those advances were, well, 
because of these startups like SpaceX and a few other companies that were able to um, allow us to launch satellites very cheaply, very efficiently, and very quickly. SpaceX alone um, had 18 rocket launches this year and was able to put quite a lot of satellites into orbit. Not to mention a relatively expensive vehicle that made headlines earlier this year when Elon Musk's company was able to launch this beautiful vehicle into orbit um, relatively close to Mars and to the asteroid belt, but quite far away from Earth. And what's interesting, about 22% of all of the satellites launched um, that you see here were actually launched in the last eight years. So the efficiency of satellite launching has become dramatically higher than before. If we keep increasing the number of satellites by about 5% every single year, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of satellites in the next uh, decade or so. That's actually quite impressive. Although ironically, only about 2000 of all of these objects um, are still working. Close to about 3000 of them are basically dead weight. They're no longer functioning or are debris. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of debris here that you can see that this is actually a leftover from something. Uh, so is this. And uh, many of these objects that you see here are, in a sense, uh, orbital junk, which is a huge problem that is going to become an even bigger problem in the next few years. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit more detail tomorrow um, when I discuss the major collision between satellites that uh, occurred a few years ago and actually created an even bigger problem because uh, of the debris it created. Now, to avoid these uh, future potential collisions and problems, many modern satellites are actually required to have um, either an ability to position itself in the so-called graveyard orbit, which is actually right here, right above the uh, geostationary orbit, or it has to be able to uh, re-enter Earth's atmosphere by itself within a few years. And so, because of this, uh, many satellites that were launched uh, last year, specifically actually I believe over a hundred of them have already re-entered atmosphere and crashed back to the planet because their mission was complete and uh, they just re-entered and returned back. However, out of 65 countries that uh, operate satellites today, I believe only France actually officially signed the law requiring satellites to have the means of re-entering or uh, moving to graveyard orbit. Um, China, Russia and uh, the United States actually don't uh, enforce this just yet. There is no actual law enforcing the satellites to not be junk. Unfortunately, that's really one of the bigger problems today. And with USA leading the number of satellites operated, uh, I believe there is actually close to about 900 satellites that are American today. Um, there really needs to be some sort of regulation soon rather than later before another collision occurs. And in terms of number of satellites operated, uh, China has about 250. Russia has about 150, um, and then the other three countries on the list are Japan, the United Kingdom, and India. With India being very, very active in satellite production and satellite launches, specifically they actually hold, hold the record for the biggest number of satellites, while also making the cheapest satellite launch possible. And so uh, it's very likely that they're going to be in top three really, really soon, most likely overtaking China. Now, in terms of the actual type of satellites that are out there, only about a hundred of them are science satellites. In other words, uh, satellites that are observing Earth and or space and are studying something on the planet or something out there in space. And this number hasn't changed since last year, unfortunately, meaning that uh, the scientific uh, funding has not really been in a good spot. We haven't really launched many satellites to study the planet or study space. However, uh, there was a large increase in the so-called uh, commercial satellites, specifically communication satellites. And this is why the industry is in such a good spot right now. There's going to be a lot and a lot and a lot of new companies either needing satellites or launching satellites, which means that this is actually an industry that's going to explode in the next uh, few years. Compared to about 100 science satellites, there's actually close to 850 satellites that are commercial. In other words, satellites uh, that someone paid for to make more money. And that number is actually twice as big as the number of military satellites, uh, which is actually quite impressive. So even though the majority of satellites about 20 years ago were either military or government based, uh, today most satellites, vast majority of satellites, um, are actually commercial. And for the most part, uh, this basically means, well, satellites that provide the GPS services, satellites that provide telecommunication services like to watch TV or to use your smartphone, and other types of satellites that basically make our life here on the planet easier, but something that you may have to pay for. 
And interestingly, this year there were at least 20 satellites that were launched as a kind of a demonstration of new technology. And uh, there are actually approximately 200 satellites in total that are currently used as a kind of a project testing. And this implies that we are currently really actively developing new technologies uh, for not just uh, launching satellites, but also for having satellites that are more efficient, cheaper to maintain, cheaper to make, and uh, basically would make our life even easier down here on the planet. Uh, and so this implies that um, the technology itself is growing dramatically fast. Uh, this year was really good, last year was even better. And chances are that in the next five to 10 years, this technology is going to be growing at even faster pace um, as more and more startups and entrepreneurs essentially join the industry and create new companies. Now, SpaceX was obviously a fire starter. It kind of kickstarted the whole thing. But I'm pretty sure that in, in the next 10 years or so, we're going to have a lot of companies doing quite incredible things. For example, this company right here, known as the Rocket Lab, um, that has a very beautiful rocket that you see on the screen right here, is one such startup that recently had successful uh, launch where they launched, um, well, I guess around 20 satellites on a single rocket. And it was super, super cheap, way cheaper than even SpaceX. And this tiny company is from New Zealand and it's a startup that's uh, becoming more and more famous and they have this really beautiful but relatively small rocket known as Electron. So with the successes of companies like this, I'm sure this industry is about to explode. So if you're still choosing your career, this is it right there. Maybe go into a space industry and consider joining the ranks of SpaceX and Rocket Labs. Now, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I wanted to really talk about the total number of satellites and essentially give you an idea of how the industry is doing and how it's actually been doing a lot better than most people realize. And in the next video tomorrow, we're going to talk about the one major danger of the industry that has already actually happened once. And I'm going to also talk a little bit about this uh, topic of Kessler syndrome, which many of you might be already familiar with if you watch the movie Gravity. But that's tomorrow. Today, we're going to end on this positive note of space industry doing incredibly well and um, possibly becoming even more efficient and more relevant in the next 10 or so years. Anyway, so on that note, thank you for watching. Check out the website that I used right here in the description below. You can actually see pretty much every major satellite, including, of course, the International Space Station that's orbiting right there, very close to Antarctica and the South America, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And you can actually use this website to even track it and possibly predict when it's right above you. Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about satellites and essentially the rocket industry and how it's going to be really, really big in the next few years. In the next video, we're going to discuss the negatives and talk a little bit more about this one disaster that happened back in 2009. Subscribe if you still haven't shared this video with someone who loves learning about space and wants to learn more about sciences using simulations and video games and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Space out and as always, bye-bye.